praise the Lord. And the one who thank the Lord for each of you, as the Lord continues to help us, strengthen us, we continue to prepare. And as we continue to prepare, then the grace of the Lord is unleashed in us through the word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, great I am who I am. We just say, have your way and continue to prepare us for life in 2022 by your grace. We are waiting on you that the world will transform us and renew our minds and make us fit for your use in Yeshua's name. Amen. So the last chapter of Philippians chapter 4, Paul said something to them in verse 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. Wow. What an introduction for any leader, any overseer, anyone the Lord has assigned to a people to be able to say, my dearly beloved and longed for my joy and crown. The Philippians were something else. They truly, as you can see in this chapter, this closing chapter, they were open to the ministry of Paul and he spoke about them in high terms. He says, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. My dearly beloved, twice. He had a bond with them. It is important that leaders have bond with the people that the Lord has sent them to minister to. And it will depend substantially on how we receive the ministry of leaders. Then he says something important in verse 2. I beseech you, Doas, and beseech Sintechi, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. These were two people. You know what? These people were all co-laborers with Paul. But unfortunately, it's not just today. Unfortunately, they didn't quite get along the way they ought to. And he says, I beseech, I plead with them that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Have you not seen people who are serving with a minister and they sort of pulling together, pushing together. You see them hate each other, have jealousy, envy against each other as if it's competition. The Lord has called us to one company. Each of us take our part. The sky is too wide. Two bears cannot collide. He said, I beseech you, Doris, and I beseech Sintechi, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I treat thee also, through you, fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with my other fellow, fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. So you now beseech them to help those women which labor with him in the gospel. They are names in the Lamb's Book of Life, but certain attitudinal issues were coming up between them. I say, help them to see it. At times we need brethren who are mature to see some unhealthy trends and to be able to speak into it. We have a very terrible thing happening in our generation where people just do whatever they like. Everyone is in a silo. Everyone is isolated. So nobody can even correct anyone. Verse 4, he now came to a very important instruction. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. For emphasis, rejoice in the Lord always. Just as he said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, rejoice evermore. In all things, give thanks. Men and brethren, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. This instruction is also for us. If you focus on your challenges, if you focus on the mountains, you will always find cause to feel bad, feel depressed, and all that. But if you focus on the Lord, if you focus on He who created you, focus on He who redeemed you, you rejoice in Him. Rejoice in His finished work at Calvary, and that will take a care of everything. Rejoice in the Lord always again. I say rejoice. Then he says in verse 15, let your moderation be known unto all men. Take note of these kingdom principles. One, rejoice in the Lord always. For emphasis, rejoice. Number two, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Come to a place, it doesn't matter if the Lord blesses you with so much money, it doesn't destabilize you. If you are passing through difficulties and there's not enough money, it doesn't destabilize you because by the grace of the Lord, you learn the power of moderation, the power of being moderate in all things. And nothing external can destabilize you. It says, let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. This is a very important kingdom principle. Come to the place. If you have all the money in the world, praise the Lord. Use it to 
sponsor the Great Commission, advance the Great Commission, you are struggling, you know what? Having food and raiment, you are content. So that is two in principles in verse 4. Then in verse 3 and 4, then it says, verse 6, be careful for nothing. Another kingdom principle, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto the Lord. Another powerful instruction. They'll come to the place where you are not careful for anything. You are not troubled over anything. You are not bothered over anything. You know what? Just a, there is no lifestyle better than this. Be careful for nothing. I want to ask you, what is it that you are being careful about? What is it that is troubling you and giving you sleepless nights? What is it that is the enemy wants to use to take away your peace, your joy? Be careful for nothing. But in everything, in everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto the Lord. If you wonder why prayers are not answered, why things seem to tarry, check up this one. Are you in this frame where it says be careful for nothing? Don't be worried. Don't be troubled over anything. But by in every by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. You've not seen it, but you thank the Lord for it. You've not seen the physical manifestation, but you know that you know that is a faithful Elohim, and the timing is in his hand, whether it's a day or two or a week or a month before the thing comes, your attitude is to rejoice in the Lord. You pray, you supplicate with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto the Lord. These are powerful kingdom principles. Then verse 7, Yeshua. If you do this way, rejoice in the Lord always. If you let your moderation be known to all men because the Lord is at hand. If you are careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you make your request known unto the Lord, what will happen? There will be an outcome. The peace of Elohim. The shalom of Elohim. Yeshua said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, I give unto you my peace. The peace is one great factor. One great blessing Yeshua gives his people the ability to be whole inside, not destabilized, not confused, not troubled. The ability for their hearts to just have this green light of the presence of the Lord. He said, the peace of Elohim that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Yeshua HaMashiach. These are powerful kingdom principles. Each of them, you can meditate upon them and pray them in. Then he now says something. The things to think on. If you're a kingdom citizen, an ambassador, what does the Lord expect you to think on? Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, and whatever, whatever things are of good report, six things he mentioned here, things that are true, not just true, things that are honest, not just honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of good report. If there be any virtue, be any praise, think on these things. Do you know what? Brothers and sisters, this scripture will save your life. Come to a place, any thought that comes to your mind, you check up, you do a reality check. Is it true? Even if it's true, is it honest? Even if it's honest, is it just? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it of good report? Something may be not of good report. Something may be dictate your direction of life. That's what he said, think on. Remember what he said in the book of 1 Corinthians? He tells us that weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds. So any thought that comes to our mind that is not true, cast it down. That is not pure, cast it down. That is not lovely, cast it down. That is not of good report, cast it down. Anything is not... In verse 9, oh, sorry, you say, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things alone. What is it that comes to your heart? What is it that comes to your mind that doesn't fit this framework? Deal with it. Violently reject it. 
Then he said in verse 9, those things which he have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the Elohim of peace shall be with you. He said, follow my example. The things you have learned from me, the things you've received from me, the things you've heard from me, the things you've seen in me, and you know what? If you do them, the peace, the Elohim of peace shall be with you. Then he said in verse 10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me had flourished again. They cared for him before, then they seemed to have come down. Have you not seen it in church? In the ministry where you are connected, you know, have the Lord, you receive a revelation from the Lord, you begin to support, you begin to stand with the somehow either distraction or people, naysayers. Before you know it, your love waxes cold and you back down from what you used to do. You know what? Paul said something, but I rejoice greatly that now at the last your care of me had flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. These people were careful but they lacked opportunity. They didn't have either the resources or the opportunity to give to him. Then he says something important in verse 11. Not that I think in respect of want. I'm not saying this because I have need. I'm under pressure. He say no. I don't speak in respect of want. For I, Paul said, I have learned in whatever state I am, there we to be content. Paul said, the, one of the secrets of my apostolic success is that I've learned to be content. You give me water in a tiny cup, praise the Lord. You give me in a huge cup, praise the Lord. He said, I've learned to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Abased means come down. Abound means go up. I know how to be abased and how to be abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. This is so interesting. Paul spoke about him because he was a man. When he got to a place where people supported him, he focused on the job and did the work of ministry. If he went to a place like Corinth where the people were proud and arrogant, he would labor with his hand to provide for himself and those who were worth him. And Paul learned how to abase and abound. You know, I experienced this practically one year. I think it was in... I don't know whether it was 2005 or so. I went on a trip to America from Africa, and it was wonderful. And on that trip, you know, I had all the facilitations, everything, all that, all those beautiful, wonderful things. And then I went to Africa. As I went to Africa, we had an invitation from Cameroon, Limbe County. Limbe, I think it's in the southwest county, Limbe City. And I went with Pastor Jalat, and we went, you know, no airplane, we were to go by road. He thought it was a day or a day or two. Said, well, brother, what is it? We took our handbags for our pillows and lay on the third road. Early in the morning, there was a water nearby. We didn't know whether we were crocodiles, but you know what? What could we do? We just went there, splash around to scare anything. Had our bath about 5, 5.30 a.m. And when the vehicle was eventually ready to move, it began to move, and it got to the boundary of, I think it was Cross River and, yes, Cross River and uh, the boundary of Cross River and Cameroon, and they couldn't cross because we got there late. In Africa, they closed the borders. So we got there late. You know what? We had to spend the night in front of an army cantonment. The bench in the bus took it on, lay on it, but the next day we, we went. We only made the last day of the conference in Limbe. The last day did what he wanted to do. It was awesome. But it was a typical example, and we can tell you, we faced that. And every minister, I want to share this to you. Nothing destroys ministry as clinging to what you think you are. If you can't adjust to situations, you are in trouble. Learn to abase, learn to abound. You go to a place, you say, Lustin, you guys are so givers. You gave and gave, even when it was in Thessalonica. You say you supply these necessities. It's not that I really need something, but I desire that the fruit may abound to your account. There are times if you are working with somebody who the Lord has elected and given an assignment that is beyond that person, and the Lord brings you to connect with that person, and you willingly, willfully, not to be manipulated, not to be appealed, you willingly receive of the Lord and take your place. Fruit is 
are bound into your account. Every single thing the Lord accomplishes through that vessel by supplying the need of that vessel, you are a partaker of the same uh, benefit. Whatever that person accomplishes is based on the principle that Paul explained that he plants Apollo's waters, Elohim gives the increase. That principle is simple. Whether you are the one that prayed and prayed through and cleared the way in prayer, or the one that gave to support the work, gave to support the minister to be able to have things to put on the table, you know what, whatever is accomplished through that ministry, you are part and parcel of it. Heaven acknowledges you, and on the last day, when the rewards are being distributed, you who gave, you will receive your own portion. This is something that you don't have to negotiate for it. It's a don't deal. This is a divine principle. It's a kingdom principle. That somebody plants, another waters, somebody gives, somebody prays, and the work is done. Then he said, I des not because I desire a gift, but I desire food that may abound to your account. What they were doing in investing in Paul, fruit was abounding to their account. But I have all, verse 18, I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an order for a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to Elohim. If you give with a good heart, if you give without intention to control, if you give because you know that this is what the Lord has apportioned to you, you know what? Your gift will be a, an order of a sweet smell, just like the day that Noah offered the sacrifice after he came out from the you know, ark. He offered the sacrifice, the Bible said, Elohim smelled a good smell. And then he made that awesome promise that seed time and harvest shall not cease. So there are things you give to the Lord. The spirit with which you give them, the quantum and quality of what you give, the sincerity, the knowledge of what you are doing, it can bring about a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to Elohim. Then he now gave them a promise. Every Christian likes to claim this promise. But this promise is not for every Christian. It's for people who fit into the framework of the church at Philippi, the way they cared for the apostle that the Lord assigned to them, the way they were very, very detailed about it, very fastidious about it, that even when he was in Thessalonica, they gathered phones and sent to him. He said in verse 19, But my Elohim shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Yeshua HaMashiach. He said, say, say, this is your payback. Every need of yours, Elohim will supply because he sent me and you received me as one sent by him and you became partners with me in what the Lord did. He said, that God who sent me, who knows what you have done, he will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Yeshua HaMashiach. All things the Father has is in Yeshua. And through Yeshua, he blesses all. Then he says in verse 20, Now unto Elohim and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Very important. Then he said in verse 21, Salute every saint in Yeshua HaMashiach. Salute them. Paul always had a habit of saluting people. The brethren with that, that are with me greet you. He was a relational apostle. All the saints salute you. Chiefly, they that are of Caesar's household. Remember, he was in prison. The prison was attached to Caesar's household. And so he was able to say to them, the brethren that are of Caesar's household, who were already born again through his ministry, while he was in prison, he was ministering to people. What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when things seem to be, you know, the bottom seems to be dropping out on you? Our attitude determines our altitude. Attitude is our emotional response to challenges of life. Altitude is the height we can soar. If you have the right attitude, facing issues, know when to keep quiet know when to speak, know when to handle things in wisdom, know when to just absorb things and throw it to the Lord. If you have the right attitude, there is nothing the Lord cannot help you to overcome. Paul was in prison, 
Yet, in prison, he wrote the epistle to the Ephesians, the epistle to the Philippians, the epistle to the Colossians, the epistle to the, epistle to the uh, Thessalonians, and he wrote some other epistles even though he was in prison. That you are in a situation that men may even look down on you does not change the fact that Elohim, if he's with you, no one can be against you. Then he closed, you know? The closure was written by the person that he dictated the letter to. Part of the epistles of Paul, he would dictate it to people they write down. The grace of our Lord Yeshua be with you all. Amen. It was written to the Philippians from Rome by Epaphroditus. This personal assistant, this companion of Paul, was an extraordinary person. We saw his testimony in the previous chapter and I want to say this to you if the books will be open today what will be the quality of the service you render to the vessel the Lord has put in your life it could be your pastor you are older than the pastor what is the quality of your service it could be an overseer of a ministry it could be you know a visionary whatever but someone the Lord brought into your life what is the quality of your relationship how are you serving as unto the Lord without joy and just doing it and subject to manipulation by Satan and by human beings who have another agenda. I want to say this to you all, brothers and sisters. These scriptures are for our learning. If you need to repent, repent. Don't, don't bold face things of Elohim. When the word comes like this, give it right away. What is it the Lord wants to take out of you? Don't look at other people. Look at yourself. Consider the word. Focus on the word and let the word do a work it ought to do. This is so important, men and brethren, that we know that we never arrive until we cross the pearly gates. And while we are still on that journey, like Paul, we can press forward. We can go, press onto the upward call of Elohim to become all he wants us to be. I want to thank the Lord for you. I'm going to pray now and make some announcement. I just ask everyone here now, is there anything you've seen? Only you knows that only you know the Lord wants to deal with you and take away from you. Can you raise your hands unto the Lord? Let's pray right now. Father, I pray for my brothers and my sisters and all of us that your grace kinds of birds to, to perch on them while the birds can fly. You know what, Father? We alone can give the bird a chance to, you know, to stay on us and build nests. Help us not to allow it. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at aklife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.